But now it's a very special honor to announce Andy Rixinger. Andy is a long standing friend of the Eclipse Foundation. He drove a lot of topics in the automotive space at the Eclipse Foundation. And I'm really more than happy to have Andy now being involved in the Eclipse Velocitas, which was a very great information use for me. So Andy, you know that I highly appreciate what you're doing for the Eclipse Foundation and at the Eclipse Foundation. And now the stage is yours for Eclipse Veritas. Velocitas. Velocitas, Velocitas. yes. Velocitas. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Th thank you, Michael. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, introduction. So, some words about me. So, so, Michael did a lot of that stuff. So, I'm Andy. I am just got a new position within the Bosch group. Now, I'm at the Bosch Engineering. And I'm a senior, so-called senior software architect for the software-defined vehicle, which is really cool. And, of course, I'm also not the only project for Eclipse Velocitabs, I'm just the co-project lead because I have here a real cool girl here also in, in this area. So it's Gabriela who is uh, responsible for all the technical stuff. So I'm with Bosch for about 25 years, um, 15 years of that, um, yeah, I'm doing embedded software development, also some other things and of course I'm really interested to doing open source because it's cool. Um, so now I would like to present or to talk about uh, little things about Velocitas, as you can easily see. So this is also now a request to the software-defined vehicle um, steering committee. You need here some slide templates. So I reused here that from the OpenADX working group because it's vendor neutral and it's really yeah, necessary from my point of view. You need that. So, but coming to Velocitas, so here you can see a real simple and a rough um, visualization of a software-defined vehicle from my point of view. So you have a weak vehicle with a software stack on it, you have here some connectivity, you have a cloud, where some applications, some services can run in a managed way. Um, looking a little bit deeper into the software stack, uh, you typically have here a kind of an operating system, you need here some layers for communication, you will have here the one or the other middleware, um, you will have here some SDKs, some vehicle models, some vehicle applications, and also a vehicle abstraction layer. That you have a little bit of clue where Velocitas is located. So I tried to make you a little picture, so just as a yeah, navigation part to see what I'm talking about. So here you can see our project proposal, our project uh, description, which is located in the Eclipse um, area. Um, here you can find the link. I do not want to read that, uh, but um, I will tell you a little bit about that. So the goal of Velocitas is to build here some end-to-end -end scalable modular a development tool chain, an easy-to-use development tool chain, um, for creating here some containerized so-called vehicle apps, the in-vehicle applications. Velocitas offers, offers also a comfortable, a fast and efficient development experience uh, to increase the velocity of a development team. Um, so Velocitas is Latin and stands for Velocitas and so speed is everything, so to speak. Not, not in every case, but but often enough. Velocitas combines here GitHub and Visual Studio Code, for example, and provides you here some elements, some solutions for the DevOps cycles to implement that. Uh, in, in Velocitas case, more on the dev side. So you can see here, on the, yeah, it provides you some SDKs, um, some templates currently realized in Python. So, but for, you heard it also in the former presentations, Rust is a real big topic, so it's on the agenda, it's on the backlog um, for C and for, the, for, for hopefully everything which is needed. And um, you can see here also a list of the technologies which are used in Velocitas or in which we have here some, some interfaces. For example, for containerization, the Docker, Kubernetes, then Dapper, uh, 
sorry, as, as middleware, then the Kuxa wall, the vehicle abstraction layer there for G, RPC, MQTT, and also some working groups, Covisa with the vehicle specification, uh, vehicle signal specification um, definition. So the offering of Eclipse Velocitas, you have for more or less every step in the dev cycle or in the DevOps cycle on the dev side. Here's some solutions, for example, for the preparation, you have here some vehicle app project templates, which allows you here to a really quick project set, set up to produce here um, some vehicle apps. On the coding side, you have here two uh, elements, it's the vehicle app programming model, it's the vehicle abstraction layer. You have for the building side some GitHub action workflows, uh, blueprints for that, for a real easy startup to having here um, the CI CD aspects really fast set it up. And of course, you have to test what you are doing, what you are writing. So therefore, you have here the vehicle app integration tests. You have here for the release section some automated release processes. And then to deploy that, some runtime and deployment models. So the initial contribution so we are currently in the transition phase to bring all that stuff to uh, the GitHub repo. Um, we'll contain here some Python SDKs and a template repository containing here some sample in-vehicle implementations to allow a real easy ramp up of the developers into the software-defined vehicle ecosystem development model. An integration of vehicle model into the developer IDE to directly interface with the APIs and the data. Some Visual Studio Code dev containers to simplify the developer workspace setup for an in-vehicle application development. Out of the box, GitHub workflow implementations and required GitHub actions to build a container, to test the in-vehicle applications, to document and visualize all that stuff, and to publish at the end the build image. So the real cool thing is that you have also, or can do an, an, easy, uh, an easy startup, that you can see what uh, Velocitas is able to do. There is an included example so for the easy start. It's called a seat adjustment. So at first, you can here request the change of the seat position. At the next step, the seat adjuster vehicle app receives the request. The vehicle app gets then the current vehicle speed. The adjuster vehicle apps trigger then the seat adjustment with the support of the vehicle app SDK. Then a service moves the seat to the new position. The seat service returns OK or an error code. Then the seat adjuster vehicle app returns a success message, otherwise an error message. And the success or the error message will be returned to re the requester. But to get an better impression of what Velocitas is doing. Have a look on the short demo uh, we have here. So let's see what Velocitas can do. And with that music you can hear Velocitas.
and now your application is ready for deployment with LIDA. LIDA will be presented in the next presentation later on, so be curious what Christian will present then. So we are currently in the transition phase, as mentioned before. So we are currently on the way to bring all that stuff into the GitHub repositories. Um, currently not 100% is in there, but you can have a look, of course, what is there. And uh, I guess we are at 90, 95% right now, just some small things missing. And then you can start, um, hopefully in the next weeks, with uh, the complete step, with the complete yeah, development of here some some vehicle applications. So Gabriela, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, thanks. So a short summary on Eclipse Velocitas. So Velocitas provides your development tool chain for creating in vehicle applications, the so-called vehicle apps. It increases as the name says, the, velocities, uh, the velocity of the development team, increases quality through openness, will be essential to the success of development activities. So the future of the mobility will be software defined. So let's put all the projects, all the presented projects of today together and build the future vehicle. I invite you all to do that with us or in the working group, Stay curious what will come next. Here you can find here some useful links around all that stuff. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, let me rephrase one of the comments from the chat. Was that real-time working speed at Bosch? <laughs> no comment on that. <laughs> Okay, a second comment I would like to make. If someone has a good idea how we can combine dock mode, adaptive cruise control, and seat adjustments into something, we already have a starting point for collaboration, right? Maybe tonight at the dinner we can discuss how we can combine these three functions. I have no idea. So, a couple of questions in the online chat. Any questions here? Anyone would like to ask a question? Okay, then I will start with the online chat while you could still think on questions. Andy, so the, let me just read out loud. I did not let, dig into the question. What is the overhead using Kubernetes? Is it powerful enough to run in a non-cloud environment? Keith, K3S is Kubernetes, right? Yes. Just as a non-technical guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> shall I ask the question? Or have you understood the question? I, I understand, okay. understand the question. Um, I'm not really the technical guy. Currently, Velocitas is more running on, on the development environment and not in the cloud. Uh, they are on the local cloud, so to speak, on local Kubernetes. Yeah, but currently, yeah, not sure how to answer. Maybe can someone help me? <laughs> you just from the. I can answer that later. Yeah, that's great. Just here. Uh, hi, Christian here from the Leader Project. Yeah, we can answer that later on also in the presentation because don't hate me for that, but it's also K3S on that. So uh, don't give me a shit storm for that, but it's the first implementation. So no, it's not meant for doing into a restricted uh, environment, but it's the first and we have to work on that as well. So, but it's one smaller one instead of K8S, so keep posted on that, I would say so, what we bring out in the future. Um, there's one related question in the chat. Do the containers produced actually assume required to be deployed to Kubernetes environment or is the CRI sufficient? A CRI what? C? CRI. C-R-E. Container runtime environment? No, that would be CRE. No, I don't know. <laughs> but Maybe the one who asked that question in the online chat, could you write out what you mean with, by CRI and then we can... Oh, container runtime infrastructure. Well, it was close, right? So to be honest, you get me on the wrong foot today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you again. <laughs> so, I, I, can, I can put the question with me and... Um, Absolutely. So, that later uh, yeah. on. 
I had to once again would emphasize communication and community. Yeah. I like that one that you can't answer because that would be exactly what I would like to see. Um, any online uh, on-site questions in the meantime? Otherwise, I would continue with the online questions. No? Okay, I continue. You need now be listen very carefully. That's a long question with an, um, with an example. And you need to understand that example. Thanks for the presentation. That's the star, which I can fully support. The question is, assume a vehicle can be ordered with seats from suppliers A and B. And the new version of the vehicle app needs, to the, needs the features of seat A, does not work with seat B. Clear so far? Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that the new app is not accidentally deployed to a seat B vehicle? So that's a, that's a really good question. This is something... Okay, let, let me try it in another way. So at a first glimpse, um, it's open, so you can can um, yeah ad adjust your your solutions by your own. This is one thing. Um, all the verification validation mechanisms um, have also to be figured out. So it's currently not not a part of Velocitas. So I guess this is, or from my point of view, yeah, you you have to deal exactly with such situations, and that, that will not be the the only one you will uh, or which will occur in the future so you will have different providers of functionalities of hardware of equipment and we have yeah to find here then ways to do exactly that maybe you can can have here some some information which the hardware can send so that you know what is in there that could be one que uh, one one solution um, yeah, st still not answered this over, whoops, overall big question at the end, from my point of view. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is my understanding. Tom? Uh, Tom, do, do, do you have a solution for exactly that? Uh, 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 speaking for a car maker, uh, in this sense, maybe I can get a comment to that that would help. Um, Every car maker who brings out a product into the market needs to ensure that all the components, and they're already sourced from different suppliers with different hardware, need to work together. And um, therefore, um, we cannot let it happen that a customer, that the application A and B and, and one does not work, it would not be like you would expect it in an Android app store where your application just break in front of a customer. So there is definitely a qualification step in between um, before we let applications in car controlling seats potentially while driving or whatnot. Uh, so process steps to ensure that certain things cannot happen, like mentioned in the question. That's all. Okay. Um, there's one more question in the chat. You mentioned Eclipse Cooksa in one of your slides. What is the role of Cooksa in Velocitas? So it's not not complete Cooksa at the moment. It's a part of Cooksa. It's uh, the vehicle abstraction layer, um, which is used or which is transferred from the original implementation to to Cooksa now to to make here um, or the combination because they started with that. They have also cool hardware, for example, the Canopy, um, yeah, to mention here at uh, this part. And um, therefore, we, we, yeah, we, we have here two projects which can work together. So and now it's more a kind of a software architecture um, decision uh, which runs in what project, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Another uh, any comments? comment from... Um, just please, so that, can you just reach the microphone up? Yep, sure. That would be great. Just two, four rows up, so the online participants can hear you as well. Thank you. Uh, so from the vehicle abstraction here, we have on the one hand side, we um, provided there also the functionality of a new vehicle data broker um, to have the access to data. And we have also provided a canned feeder, which uh, providing then the data to the vehicle data broker and also some um, example uh, vehicle services. That is a contribution that we did to Cooksa and uh, reference uh, that 
services and uh, applications in the velocity or velocitas um, vehicle model and in our implementation. Thanks for helping out. Um, there's another question. How is Kubernetes load compared to Docker Compose only? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a valid answer. I have no idea. <laughs> be a valid answer. If that's too detailed, my, my proposal me, yes. would be get in contact with the developer team yep. and talk to this. We will people. clarify that later Something on. like there's a typo line 115, maybe not be yep. answerable. Today, yeah, please, but don't give me wrong. I like me. that question, but that would be maybe something more for an external exchange afterwards because yeah. it's maybe too deep. So you um, have my email address. Please reach out to me, or use the development yeah. um, mailing list. There, there's another question, and again, I think no, I have no answer. Would be a valid question because once again, there's a couple of acronyms inside. It is my understanding that new base images for OCI and Docker containers will be required to have communicate with different ECUs. Will these base images be provided? Can, can you repeat it once again, Let me please? Try to speak more clearly and slowly. <laughs> it is my understanding that new base images for OCI and Docker containers will be required to have, to communicate with different ECUs Will these base images be provided? So it's obviously the question is if some sort of base images will be provided. I, I think we will hear the answer of that question in the next presentation. Yeah, perfect. So okay. that would be the direct reference. Um. So just stay tuned for another couple of minutes and then we'll have an answer here. Um, I'm seeing I'm done with the online questions. Are there still some questions by the audience? If not, I will collect my microphone. <laughs> Don't lose it once again. <laughs> and <laughs> that's not nice. Um, I think we, 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 we are four minutes early. So um, it seems, Andreas, Andy, that, that you are already quite, quite mature when it comes to upload code and similar. So what would be the right way for a developer would be interested to do something here to get involved? I think for sure reaching out to the committers and, and, and reaching out to the community. But I think so as I understood, I could start using your code tomorrow because you said 99% is already there, something like this? I would say, yeah. Or 95 in, 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 Not 100%, so we, we need some, some data to, to um, bring the last... Uh, small pieces together and then yeah let's start on on that way so to to communicate with us or with the community um, there are some some possibilities one is direct uh, we had the email but then it's a one-to-one -one communication it's m typically better to use here the development mailing list for a special project or for the complete project um, the the STV working group mailing list, so then you can um, see or you can reach out to the, co the whole community. Um, we have, or the STV working group has also on, on a website uh, where all the projects will be on there. I guess it's currently not visible, just with an uh, yeah, with the agenda for today, you can see everything, and then you can have a look on GitHub on the project proposal side, what is in there, and then reach out to us if you have here some questions. Um, yeah, engage yourself, have a look. What what is yeah what what is your need? What is for you feasible? If you miss something, reach also out to us. Um, we try to close the gaps in the future, of course. Yeah. Maybe as a final question, um, that already looked very professional. It was a dedicated project website. You have a logo, you have that video. Um, and maybe it's not a secret that this initiative was initially driven by you and Microsoft, for example. The Microsoft presentation was also quite well um, um, already advanced. I just want to ask you how long you're already taking the idea with you to open up Velocitas, just not to give other organizations the impression that this could be done within weeks. I assume you would discuss a little bit longer than just four weeks when we ask for project um, contributions that you would like to do something in the open with Velocitas, right? 
or has that everything happened in the last four weeks? That would be that would <laughs> no, be very, no, very, 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 not, not very, really. So very good, but so I was a bit involved also in in um, doing some small working package work packages from the Bosch side for starting this working group. And regarding that one, um, we need more than a year. So my first contact to this point was, um, I guess it was beginning, uh, of la beginning of last year, yes. And then you see, you, you have always to do here journey, especially in bigger companies where you, where you have here processes, where you have to deal with the legals, where you have to be safe on the IP side, and, and therefore this needs time. But it's worth it to do all that stuff to work to come to, into a collaboration with other ones. One one special thing, so it's also um, a bit more in the past, was especially with Rex, for example. Um, when do you have the chance to collaborate with a competitor from from the company side or with with ZF? It's typically not possible, and, and now we have the chance to do exactly that in an open way, in the open source community. And we are all dealing typically with similar problems, and why doing not the so-called non-differentiating stuff together and uh, focus on the differentiating stuff, and, and therefore, therefore it's worth, and it's not, the thing, um, okay, we want to go open source, we do it tomorrow, that also won't work. You need to have also a bit of a strategy uh, beside that. And that needs a little bit of time, of course. Yeah, and, and if you think about maybe opening up a project from your organization, um, maybe it's not a good way to wait until it's perfect. Um, search contact to people who are experienced with this one, who did this in the past, and try to find out what would be the best point in time to present your project to the public, right? Um, I think waiting for a 100% perfect project, so why would your community to work on the project to, to, to extend the project? So think about maybe, and, and don't, for each and every project, the answer may be different, right? But I think one good advice I would give is talk to people who did this in the past already, and they may give you ideas what could be good KPIs to decide, now it's time to open source my project, or maybe you would like to spend a little bit more effort before you open source your project. Just get in contact with people who did this, and Andy is for sure and perfect example for this one. So um, don't wait maybe too long. That would be maybe as bad as starting too early. Um, try to find the right point in time for your project to present it to the community. Andy, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure to Thank listen you. to you. Thank you.